Hello guys, so in this video we will go through each item in the content menu and see what is the properties for each layer or each group or each map or each raster or table. So we will start from the top here, we right click here on the map and we go to properties and you will see here that you have different tabs. The first one is the general one where you can change your map name as we did in the previous video and here you can define how you want to display your map units so you can define it with meters, decimal degrees or any map units and it will show up here at the bottom depends on how you change it here. Also you can change it from here if you want to change it anytime when you are working on your map. Uh, here you can change the reference scale. Remember when you right click here and we set the reference scale you can change the reference scale from here also you can change the value of it. And here you can change the rotation of the map for example let's make it 120 and we say ok you see that the map rotated. So let's put it back and here you can change the background color and sometimes you need to use the background color of the map if you are doing a layout and you need to uh, show different color than the white or no color you can change it from here and here you can include the maximum scale in your scale range if you set minimum and maximum scale you can define the maximum scale based on your scale range and here allow assignment of unique numeric IDs so that will create unique numeric IDs for the map layers or the web layers you publish. Uh, here you have the extent, you can change the extent so for example let's say ok here and when I go click on full extent it will show the extent for all the layers but at any time you can change that extent so for example let's go back here and zoom to this group layer so we have our area of interest here you can change the extent for your map from the properties and you go to the extent use custom extent and then you can customize your extent however you want you can enter the values based on the meter values from the top right bottom and left so you can set your extent based on the meter value on the map so here is the top here left and here right and here the bottom so you can change it however you want in here also you can set the extent for the current extent so this is the one I prefer to use sometimes so after I zoom to all my layers I use current extent as my extent or you can use a specific layer to make it your full extent of the entire map so that's how you change the extent for the map and you will see when we apply these changes when I click on the full extent it will always bring me here to my current extent right now the one I choose right here uh, here clip layers and clip layers will allow you to clip your extent so for example when we click full extent it show us the entire map and it show us areas that we don't want even so that our area of interest is exactly how we see it on the map right now so I don't need all the other information because it causes a lot of caching and a lot of uh, loading for the base maps so here you can select to clip your map based on the map extent or the outline of the features so it will make your map clipped to all the features you have on your map or to clip to custom extent and when you clip to custom extent you can use any layer to do that same thing we did with extent so right now let's choose it for example to clip use the map extent and we set the map extent to make it the current extent right here so when I click OK if I go anywhere else you will see that the only thing shown right now is only this area here everything else around here have been clipped and that's good to make sure that you are not loading any unwanted area and cause more processing to your map and also when I click full extent you'll see that it will go to the extent I set it up also one of the good things is that you can set your clip based on a certain layer so for example if we have our layer here the biggest one is counties we can set the clip to match a certain layer by choosing clip to outline of a feature and we double click on counties and we click OK and you will see that everything will be clipped based on the counties see so right now you don't have anything else other than uh, your data and when you hide your feature classes you will see even the base map is clipped to your area and this sometimes is good for uh, your layout so if you want to show an area without any extra things on your map you create the clip based on a feature layer and you show it in your layout so here we have the metadata it's exactly the same like when you right click here and you click edit metadata you can edit the metadata from here here you can change the coordinate system uh, to make it match any other coordinate system in the layers coordinate system for the Z values so you have a coordinate system for the X and Y 2D and when you work on 3D you can have coordinate system for the X and Y and coordinate system for the Z values 
Here transformation, if you want to transform your coordinate system to another coordinate system or use another coordinate system to transfer your coordinate system to, you do it through here. And then the next thing is illumination where you can change the angle and the direction and the contrast of your map which means you kind of simulating where the sun is so if you work on 3d it will be more visible in a way that it shows you where the sun is you can put it in the north with a 40 degree angle and it will simulate like the light is coming from this direction like the sun is coming from this direction and it will show shadows based on the values you're doing here and when we have some 3d data i can change the values here to show you how to make effects and here you can apply label settings so if you change it the label settings here it will apply to all the other layers it's like because we are changing it on the map properties level it will apply to all the other layers so here you can change the color of unplaced labels so if you have labels that is unplaced in the right location it will be have this color and here you can change the degrees of the vertical labels you can also choose if you want to rotate your point and polygon labels with the map or you want to allow to overlap borders and that means that if the label is much bigger than the border that's okay for the label to overlap the border of your feature and the last one here you change the color model and this one here you just choose what color model you want to choose and it will affect all the colors you are using in your map so rgb red green blue is the most common one that is used but sometimes in other kind of data you might need to use a different color of model especially with raster data because raster data use different spectrums and different bands so sometimes you need to use different color model with your rasters so this is the settings for the map properties let's say okay and here if you right click on the group layer and you go to the properties you'll see that you have only two tabs the general and the metadata you can change the name the maximum and minimum scale and also one of the good things here that you can enable layer should be refreshed uh, on a certain time so for example sometimes you have a case where you have uh, gps data shown on your map and this gps data is sent by tracking vehicle or something like that where your uh, devices or using a collector app they take data and they send it to the database so you want to view it on your map and instead of you coming here and say refresh on the map right here at the bottom every single time you want to see the new data you can define how often you want to refresh your data so you don't need to do anything and everything will be refreshed for you so you can see the latest data that you received by checking this one and define how many seconds or minutes or hours or days you want to refresh your map and once you do it on the group layer it will apply to all the layers inside of this group layer uh, the metadata you can change the metadata from here as well now when we go to the feature layer and we go to the properties you will see that we have much more options so let's just start from the top here we have the general which is you can change the name of the layer the minimum scale and the maximum scale and also the update uh, interval and here the metadata here the source where it shows you where this feature class uh, exists or what is the source for this feature class and you can change the set data source from here so if you moved your data source somewhere you can set it again from here if you cannot view it in here it will give you a red message saying that we don't have this data in the right location so you come here and you change the set data source from here here you can change the name, the alias, and you can see all the information related to your feature class, like geometry type, coordinate system, what is the extent for this layer, what is the spatial reference, and what is the domain resolution and tolerance for this specific layer. Elevation, it's the setting where you set up when you have a 3D layer, you can set the elevation properties from here. Selection, here you can change the color of the selection for this specific layer. So as you saw before, when we do selection, there is a light blue selection color to select your features. But you can change the selection color from here if you want to have a unique color of selection for any feature layer you have. And here automatically select related data. If you check this one and for example we have a join or relate between this feature class and another feature class or a relationship class, uh, every time you select a feature from the series, it will highlight also and select the other feature that is related to this one. And we can see this more in details when we do the relationship class or the join. And here display, you can, this one, if you disabled it, it will not respect the scale reference you set. So if you right click on the layer right here and you set set scale, and now we know what set scale does. If this one is disabled, 
it's not gonna respect that you set a scale for it and here we have the display field and the choice to uh, show map tips and what this does let's go to the counties so I can show you more so here the display when I do uh, open the pop-up window for the feature let's say the counties when I click on the counties and I open the pop-up window I can choose the field from here that will be the identifier for this uh, feature so for example here we have the county name let's change it to expression and say I will add a word county to it by adding plus and say okay show map tips so now when I say okay every time I hover my mouse on a certain feature and I leave my mouse you will see that it said current and added the word county as I added in the expression and also when I click on it and I see the pop-up window you will see here the same thing which is the display field is the name of the county plus county the word we added so that's how you can change the display field and also how can you enable or disable the map tabs so caching as we discussed before in the ArcGIS desktop videos that caching is a way for ArcGIS Pro to make like cache images from the features and the maps and the base layers you have so every time you use your map you make it faster and faster every time you use it so there is a folder location where every time you use the map ArcGIS Pro will take like small images from your extent and your map and save it as a cache and then every time you go to the same place it will be much faster to load much faster than the first time so every time you use the map more it will make it faster the next time that's what is caching for you can clear the cache here if you want to save some uh, space on your computer or also you can clear it if you are uh, not going to use this data ever again you can clear it so you save yourself some space on your computer and here we have the definition query where you can filter your layers based on a certain expression so for example let's create a new definition query you can write a SQL statement if you enable this one but if you want to just make it simple uh, we can for example say I want my query definition to be showing the counties that have an area equal to or greater than let's see the values we have here so let's say more than 3000 anything equal or more than 3000 I want to see that also you can add an extra definition so you can show two different things I'll show you right now so if we say okay here it will show us only the counties that have more than 3000 square miles in area and also you can cancel it anytime by coming here and delete it from here or you can save this expression or you can load a certain expression you have and here you can add another definition so you can add several definition query or you can make a big query using the SQL statement but here you can combine queries together so every time you get a new map you want to see what kind of data it have make sure to go to the layer properties check the query definition to make sure that you are actually viewing all your data because if you open the attribute table you are not gonna see anything other than the one that match the condition if you work on the feature editing add a new feature you only will be able to work on the features that match the query definition so when you get a new layer or some data that you never used before make sure to check the query definition to make sure that there's nothing is hidden from you the second option here is time and as you saw in the ArcGIS desktop video about time we will do the same here but later so we will have a separate video for the time and see how can we enable it here and what other options and properties we can apply here more than ArcGIS desktop and here we have range and range you can add a range uh, specifically for 3d data where you can have a range for where to view your data based on a certain numeric field value in your attributes indexes is used to for example if you have uh, a lot of data in one feature class let's say like hundreds of thousands or like maybe millions and you want to make the performance of this data to work faster maybe when you do selection when you do editing when you do query query definition or expressions it's better to create indexing for one of the fields that have unique values maybe the feature ID like the one used here or maybe you have a very unique ID like the global UI ID you can create an indexing using this unique IDs to make your process on this layer faster if you have so many data and we here we have joins and relates you can access it from here you can access it by right click and say joins and relates or you can access it from your uh, attribute table and we have a separate video for joins and relates and when we create the joins and relates we will come back here and see what options we have here and how our joins and relates will show up here so now we will go back to our 
query definition to delete this query definition before we say OK. And now let's check the properties for the raster images. Uh, most of them will be the same. You have the general, you have the metadata, you have the source, elevation for 3D, display, only can show map tips because you don't have fields in your uh, raster images. And here you have the cache as well. You have the joins and relates. And here we have the properties for the base layer. Here we have the same things like the general, the metadata, the source. And here it shows you what is the source or where this base layer is hosted. And it shows you which uh, units is used for. And also you can see the extent values. You can see the spatial reference. And here you can define the elevation if you have 3D uh, scene. You can define the elevation values from here for your base map. Uh, if we, for example, go here and go to the properties and check the source, you can copy this URL and you can open it in the browser to see where this map service is located. So this one located on this server and it's inside elevation folder and called world hell shade map server. So here when we open this URL services, you'll see that we have folders here. We have the elevation and here we have our layer that show up on the map right now and this is a base layer and here you have some information about this layer uh, what is the spatial reference who created it who have the copyright for it and what layers inside of it but also because this is a tiled service layer that means every single scale on this map is a combination or a mosaic of tiles like small images created as a tiles right next to each other to create the image you see. So here it shows you how many levels inside of this tile the map service and here you can view the start tile so this is the first one and this is the end tile for this specific level and here it tells you the resolution and the scale for this level. So when you change the scale you will go from a level to another. So now let's go to our map and see how this tiles looks like. So if I cancel this and I disable the feature layers and the raster and as you see here when I zoom in you will see that the map slowly rebuild itself and when I pan you'll see that the map slowly will rebuild itself because it creates a tiles from this extent we are here right now it's a little bit fast on my computer but but actually if you have a slow internet connection you will see but you can notice it too like here and when you change the scale you will see that the tiles change as well so that is what tiled service layer is and when you view it on the map server it will show you the definition for this specific layer the levels and the scale and the resolution for each level and you have other information here like the format each small tile is a gpge format and the quality is 90 you have the initial extent the full extent and you have some information about this uh, tiled layer so let's go back to our map and the last thing we have here is the properties for uh, the table and you will have similar things like you have with the feature class here you have the general only with the name because you cannot have minimum or maximum scale because there's no view and there's no features for this table it's just tabular data you have the metadata the source you can define a definition query and the definition query we're not going to show anything on the map it's just going to filter your table like you make a selection by attribute or something like that here also you can do joins and relates and also you can change the display if you want to view some of this uh, data in a pop-up and here selection also if you apply this one it will select all the features that is using join or relate or relationship class related to this table so here let's cancel and make sure we remove the definition query from this layer we removed it already let's go to our full extent and view our layers and the raster and we have everything like it was before let's make sure we save our project so that's it for this video now we saw all the properties and what is the options we have and what we can change from the properties window for each layer and for each feature class raster or table and as usual if you have any questions please let me know and we'll see you in the next video thanks